all right, perfect. So the word that Matthias chose to introduce me was disruption, right? So I guess because of that, I'm in a position to make a more strong statement. And the strong statement is, how do you describe supply chains? And I would chose two words. And those two words are, are really black boxes. So let me tell you why. So the problem with supply chains today is that we don't know what happens when and where. Let's start with a product. Let's think about your phone. So think about your phone, all of the different materials and components that have to be sourced, assembled, and integrated throughout the entire globe to actually enable this product to function. And think about you breaking your glass, uh, the, the, the touch screen on your phone. So now think about what's going to happen throughout the entire supply chain to actually go from, from, from sand towards this, this ready-made product, which is a touch screen that now can be integrated into the phone again. Now the question that I ask all of you is, do you actually know where the product comes from and the, process it, and then, and the processes it goes through? The obvious answer is no. Like, like, why would you care, right? The only thing that you care about is the end product. But the, bigger, the better question is, like, does the company, like for example, Apple know what's happening throughout the entire supply chain where the product is actually being assembled and made and processed? The answer to that is also no, right? Because supply chains are black boxes. And that is a huge issue. Because let's think about the future. Let's think about five to 10 years where we've achieved this vision of a connected and autonomous future. So we have autonomous vehicles that are driving around the city and they're enabling this new mobility future. And now a car broke, right? We have a, we have a flat tire and the car automatically, autonomously purchases a new tire. But now the problem comes again, like we don't know where the product comes from. And now when it comes to autonomous vehicles, this, this, this history and origin of products is truly crucial because now it's not just about knowing where it's come from, it's actually safety and security. It's, it's for, there to save our lives. And this, this origin of products is incredibly important to actually ensure the integrity of not just the product itself, but of the entire supply chain. So let's think about solutions. So the first solution is obviously, hey, we have the Internet of Things. It's there to really make our supply chain smarter by actually having sensors, actuators, and, 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 and connected devices, collecting data, and making it possible for us to make faster and better decisions. Our supply chains are becoming more reactive, and they're becoming more predictive, as we've seen with the previous speakers that are doing a tremendous job in actually enabling this vision. But this is only half of the story. The other half of the story is like, how do you actually ensure that all of the data that we get, that it's truthful, all of the events that happen, that we know that they've actually happened? So how can you actually trust what is happening? So the answer to that is distributed ledgers. So before I'm going to jump into what they actually enable, let me give you a brief breakdown of what distributed ledgers actually are. So the most simple explanation is it's a database, right? It's a simple database, database that is now replicated in this peer-to-peer -peer network. So it's not just a single server that has a database, but it's an entire network. And the beautiful thing about this database is because it's replicated, because everyone in the network is connected to each other, there's a consensus. And what this consensus means is that everyone in this network agrees what is true and what is not true. Now, the beautiful thing is, hey, I can actually utilize this distributed ledger to enable a secure audit trail of what is happening and what is not happening. So let's think about the features. So now when it comes to supply chains today, they're really archaic. So the first time that I got introduced to supply chains was, was last year, so I'm no expert. I'm from, coming from this from an outside perspective. And I, I heard like there's still like 8, 60, 70 percent of all supply chains are based on paper documents. Now think about how easy it is to forge a paper document. Now let's think about the solution. So what blockchains enable us or distributed ledgers enables us to do is to truly digitize supply chains. Now, it's no longer just about uh, digitizing the documents, but it's also about there to cryptographically secure those documents so that they can never be tampered with again. So that's the first feature, data security. Now, the second feature is that we can actually collect all of the different data points, all of the different events that are happening throughout the supply chain. We know who processed a good at, at, at what point in time and what they've exactly done. So through this, we can actually start understanding more and more what is happening inside our supply chains, and we can start figuring out, like, hey, what is actually going wrong? It's the second thing. Now, the third thing is that supply chains or, or blockchains are really there to fully automate the processes that are happening inside the supply chain. The best example is, is the bill of lading. Think about issuing a bill of lading today. 
it's a very manual process. Now, with a, with, with a, with a, a blockchainified supply chain, what we can actually do, we can completely get rid of all of these manual processes, and we simply have a, a piece of code that says if, if the good is loaded on, on the container, automatically issue the bill of lading, and through that, you can start triggering all of the different events, like letter of credits that have to be issued. Now, packing these three different components together truly unleash the potential of supply chains and of IoT. Now, what blockchains are, are really there for is to create new trust. Like I said before, we have a really big problem with data today. How can you actually know that the data which a sensor is getting or that uh, the data which uh, a, a, a person is inputting into the database is true? There's no way to truly factually know that. That is why distributed ledgers actually enable us to have this single source of truth. You input the data and it can never be tampered with again. And as such, you can really start knowing what actually happened. And, and through that, you establish new trust. And only if we have trust, we can fully automate all of the processes. Because the worst thing that you can do is you, you have a faulty data collection point, you automate the process, and through this faulty data collection, you start making the wrong decisions and things go wrong. You no longer know where your good is, and, and, and it, it can lead to serious financial damage. Like, the best example is what happened with Maersk, where they suddenly started missing their entire containers. So what you do is all in the central database. Nobody knows where they were. With the distributed ledger, you can truly solve these issues, because now you have a single source of truth that is in a database and replicated in the entire network. Let's think about a supply chain example. Let's think about having a, a, a coffee from Kenya that is going throughout the entire supply chain, and now we, want, we have it in our, in our shop. There's, there's very different complex processes that are happening throughout the entire supply chain. And the biggest problem is how do you actually make it possible to share this information that is happening at each data point? The way that it is happening today is largely through paper documents. We, 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 we print out paper documents in quadruples, oftentimes send them around the globe, and through that we say, hey, like, this is what happened. And this is a huge issue when we, are, when we want to have a connected and digitized supply chain. Now let's think about what distributed ledgers actually enable here. Now, it's no longer just having this, this bidirectional information sharing. It's no longer about having these data silos. It's all about creating an open and collaborative network. Now, the beautiful thing about DLT is that it's there to have a single medium of exchange, of information exchange. Because the, the, the power is really it's this single source of truth, right? So each farmer, each actor, each stakeholder in the supply chain is able to input data, is able to input events in the, in the, in the distributed ledger. And through that, we can start easily sharing this, this data with other parties. Now, the beautiful thing here is that it's not just about securing the data, it's also about making this data verifiable. So each stakeholder in the supply chain can actually verify what had happened. So let's think about, or let's discuss what we at IOTA are doing to solve these issues. So what many of, or like what Matthias has already said, we are not a startup. So we are a non-profit foundation that is truly thinking about how we can achieve this vision of a digitized and automated future. So we were the first ones to set up a non-profit foundation in Germany that is now developing a new distributed ledger technology, which is called IOTA, to unleash this potential of IoT. And so over the last few years, we've been working on, on developing a completely new protocol. So everything is open source and it's free to use, because at the end of the day, we want to build an ecosystem that is based on this collaborative and open nature. And now our vision with supply chain is it to be exactly this, to be this information exchange layer that is trusted. So now all of the different actors in the supply chain interact with a single layer that is open, that is permissionless. And through that, they can start enabling these new processes that are happening. And I've given you guys a quick example of what this actually means. So I was driving with my taxi to, to the conference this morning, and we built this super simple application to actually showcase what it means to input data in a distributed ledger and making it immutable. So what you see here is actually this trace of where it went through the city. And now what I could do is, because this data is immutable, so it's in this ledger and it's replicated, I could share this securely with other parties. Now, obviously, the data right now is open, but it can also be encrypted. And now what I, what I can decide to do is I can sh share this data with specific parties, with specific stakeholders. Because at the end of the day, I don't want everyone to know where I've been, right? 
And through this secure audit trail, you're not only just securing the data points, but you're also securing these events. So now you start getting the secure chain of custody. You really start understanding what is happening inside the supply chain. So it's no longer just about having these, these, these black boxes, but it's really about having these transparent and open systems. You really start knowing what is happening throughout the entire supply chain. And the beauty is, because this data is, is, is secured and, and, and is verifiable, it's easy to share this data with other parties. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day supply chains are incredibly complex. There are very different stakeholders that are, that are acting on their own behalf. And the best way to really unleash the potential of, of supply chains and, and of IT is to start collaborating. It's to, it's to start sharing data to really make our supply chains more predictive, more reactive, and smarter. Thank you. <laughs>